So guys, now let's talk about this question. Which of the following is a benefit of using AWS Cloud Platform? First is limited scalability. Second is increased security vulnerability. Third is reduced upfront cost. Fourth is complex server management. See, when we are moving to Azure, uh, Azure or AWS Cloud, just we need to understand it is highly scalable. It is more secure. It easy the management of the resources what you need for your application and it to also allow you to pay as you go means that means how much you will use you need to pay for that one only and that comes under opex not the capex so it to reduce the upfront cost so that's why for this option for this question our correct answer is reduce upfront cost now let's talk about this question this question they are asking when you are designing a highly available application on aws cloud which service is most appropriate to implement the option we are having Amazon EC2, Amazon S3, Amazon Boot 53, Amazon Elastic Beanstalk. So understand this question is helpful if you are looking for architecting profile or you can say the solutioning profile where you need to design any solution. Okay, so let's talk about uh, first option they are talking about. They are talking about Amazon EC2. So just understand it's kind of a virtual machine or uh, we can say a single instance which is, comes under compute service while you can configure redundancy but it's not the ideal for highly av high availability next option we are having amazon s3 which is highly durable object storage service but not specifically it is designed for high availability for any application it's kind of storage only next is amazon root 53 yes it is highly available dns service that can distribute traffic across multiple healthy instances in case of any failure and ensure your application is up and running fourth option is amazon elastic beanstalk uh, elastic beanstalk actually simplifies deployment but doesn't inherently provide high availability feature so for this question our answer is route 53 which help us to distribute traffic across multiple healthy instances so we will go with the option number three here let's talk about this question in this question they are asking which of the following is the best practice for securing iam access keys options we are having store them in a plain text file enable root user access for everyday tasks third option is rotate access keys regularly and use iam roles for application fourth option is grant all users administrative privileges so let's talk about each options one by one so first option they are talking about store them in a plain text file so the thing is uh, these iam access keys are required to access the application so we should not keep them in plain text file because it should be kept confidential and never stored in a plain tag next option they are talking about we should enable root, root user access for every data see uh, root users normally strictly limited for the security region so we should not give in any condition for everyday task it should be limited for that particular task but not should not be given the root user access third option is rotate access keys regularly and use iam roles for applications yes we should regularly rotate access keys and use iam roles for application which increase the security by minimizing the privilege escalation risk Fourth option they are talking about grant all users administrative privilege. See, when you are granting all users administrative privilege, it creates a significant security vulnerability. So we should restrict this one and we should not allow or give access to all users like administrative privilege. So in this question, for this question, we will go with the option C that so we should rotate access keys regularly and we should use IAM roles for applications so let's see in this question they are asking which aws service is ideal for automating infrastructure provisioning and deployment process the option we are having amazon cloudwatch aws cloud trail amazon s3 aws cloud formation so let's understand each option one by one so amazon amazon cloudwatch which actually a monitoring service that monitors resources not for infrastructure provisioning so this we can eliminate this option so next option is AWS CloudTrail, which actually logs API calls and it is not used for deployment automation. Third option is Amazon S3, as we already discussed in this video, Amazon S3 
is for object storage, not for infrastructure provisioning. Next is AWS Cloud Formation. Yes, that is correct option and it allow you to define and automate infrastructure provisioning with the help of templates which streamline DevOps workflow. So for this question, we will go with the option number four that is AWS Cloud Formation. Let's talk about this question. In this question, they are asking how can you establish a secure and private connection between your on-prem infrastructure or on-prem network and your AWS virtual private cloud or we can say uh, the network which you are creating under AWS. So the option we are having using a public IP address through a standard internet connection with AWS Direct Connect via public S3 bucket. See, uh, public, public IP address, the options they are giving, the first option, that is not correct here because public IP addresses are not secure for private connection. So, we should not use public IP for the private connection. Next option they are talking, through a standard internet connections. When we are talking about the secure and private connection, we should not go through the standard internet connection, which is actually not ideal for secure communication. Third option is with AWS Direct Connect. Yes, this is the proper way to connect. There are two ways. Either you can create an IPsec tunnel with the help of VPN or you can uh, connect through Direct Connect. That is like a dedicated connection between AWS Cloud and your organization. So, we should go with the option number three here. Fourth option is by a public S3 wicket. It is not ideal for secure connection. So, because it can be accessible by anyone when we are talking about public S3 wicket. So here we will go with the option number C with AWS Direct Connect. We can have or we can establish a secure and private connection between on environment and AWS Cloud. So I hope you find this video helpful. If you find it, then don't forget to click on like button, share with your friends and keep learning, keep transforming, keep growing. See you in the next video.